We asked Andy Scott, is it still sweet? I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. We mean no disrespect when we ask a band that might have one last member, and Andy Scott is the last surviving member of the classic lineup of Sweet. And I have a lot of respect for him for keeping it going. As I said in the beginning of this, sometimes when it comes to band, I'd rather it being one last member continuing the legacy than having no band at all, and we're losing a lot of classic rock stars. Here's Andy Scott. I ask, I mean, well, do you consider it I have to preface the question by going, I'd rather Pete Agnew run Nazareth than not have Nazareth. But when people ask you, is it still sweet? What would you say? There is a kind of timeline. And it was Sony over in Germany who came to me about 10 years ago, maybe a little after that, maybe eight years ago, and said, look, we've been following what's going on. You're the only band that however many of like when when Brian came out and and was singing again with backup bands that he just picked up when wherever he went uh, and was trying to call it the suite it was never going to be the suite you know he, he'd left the band in 79 he was i think manipulated a little bit by a few promoters and things like that how could i ever turn around and say to somebody you know, the reason you're not in the band anymore, mate, is that, you know, your voice is shot, you know, but that was the case. And you, so you've got Brian Connolly suite and Andy Scott suite going around at one point in time in the 90s. And I'm thinking, Mick and I, in the 81, we, we stopped touring. Steve moved to America. M Mick then had a terrible thing happen to him where his wife was found dead in the bath uh, one Christmas time. And he was, well, out of the picture for a, a year or more. I used to go and see him and I used to try and G him up and say, come and do some sessions with me. And he just wasn't interested. And then a couple of years after that, um, I bumped into an agent that, you know, was our agent. And he said, it's all out there if you want to come back. So I went and uh, stayed with Mick for a couple of days. And at the end of it, we said, right, let's get Steve on the blower and let's get the band back together. Steve initially was like, yeah, okay. But in my heart of hearts, I knew he was, because he, you get to know people, you know their traits. And I just knew, he, uh, and Mick said it as well, he said, he ain't coming to Australia with us. You know, and we were saying, come over to England, have a week with us. We'll do some deep, I've got another bass player who can sing well to, to do your bits until you're needed. Come over here and then we'll fly to Australia do, do, and New Zealand, do the tours that we've been uh, promising, maybe stop in Singapore on the way home. And, oh, yeah, that sounds great. By this time, he was still living in, uh, I think he was still living in New York. And I thought, you know, this could really, really work. But in the end, he... He didn't come back. So Mick and I moved forward into the early 90s. Mick fell ill. I almost decided not, not to do it anymore because um, there's only me. I had so many people phone me, promoters, agents, record companies. What are you doing? You know, you only have to look at bands like Uriah Heep or, you know, th th there are ways here. You know, the, um, the, the music is, is, is the main thing here. And your band has always sounded like Sweet. So I carried on. It got to the point where Sony came to me, in, I think it must have been 2012, 13, and said, can we try and tie some not, uh, dots up here with albums that you've released after the original band? And I thought, mm, not sure about this. But when they put the package together, it sounded right. It, it didn't sound too bad. And it kind of made made sense is this so, the action package is this the dvd yeah, action, package? yeah. Action, action the ultimate story and 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 we, we put two new tracks on there of which one of them is um is now a revamped version uh, the the song still got the rock um which, which is the song that's charting at the moment so however much i think i think it's the fans who designate whether this is possible or not because you'll soon know if it's not right you know, nobody will be coming to the gigs. Everybody will be now on the internet. Everybody's got opinion. You know, they'll be on the internet telling you, you know, what an arsehole you are. 
And of course, they, I don't get that. They, um, they appreciate that there is a band out there performing sweet songs for them to come and, well, used to be able to come and jump up and down. In fact, uh, we, one of the funniest things was we could never find the right venue. We've been doing some gig, uh, gigs up in December in the UK, uh, about t- 10 or 12 gigs every December. And we could never find the right venue in London. And we used to play a couple of clubs, uh, two nights in one club that held about four or 500 people. It's, it's like playing the marquee in, in the old days. Uh, th- these were the kind of gigs that you would play. And for two nights running, uh, it was like a smallish PA, reduced bat line. You know, we heard the audience louder than anything else. They're singing along to the, to the songs. And, and, and the singer turned around to me and he said, I don't need to sing these. <laughs> you know, we'll let the audience sing them. And that's what, that's what I've missed at the moment, um, you know, with, with nobody out there. And I've spoken to a lot of people. And realistically, I don't know when gigging like, like we knew. Um, I mean, I haven't gigged since the beginning of March last year. And uh, just before that, I was the master of ceremonies, the MC, the the guy who introduces the bands and in, does interviews with Wishbone Ash, Nazareth, and Uriah Heep in Germany. We did uh, like uh, eighteen dates, you know, in in the halls there, and it went it went great. It was called Music and Stories, and of course there was a little bit of video footage that we'd shot on a couple of the days before the tour started you know, in and out of a tour bus or in a dressing room. Or uh, I remember Andy Powell from Wish When He didn't arrive until uh, the evening before before the first gig. So at, at the sound check, he and I are on a couple of stools on the side of the stage, chatter, chattering away with people with cameras. And that was the, the thing that was shown on the, um, as like a prelim video be, before right. I interviewed the bands. And it, and it was fantastic. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, it, it's almost like being in a dream now, you know, you, very much. I haven't lost the will to live, but I seem to have lost um, lost a little bit of. Um, if, if you'd have asked me this, I had to have a little bit of radiotherapy to to calm a, um, a cancer scare that, that that had flared up again uh, okay. last uh, end okay. of March. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I had prostate cancer in two thousand and nine, and I think that my oncologist he he kind of thinks of me now as a little bit of a protege, you know, here I am 12 years later, still around. I'm coming out of that in June, around the time when Steve is, you know, passed away. And I have to tell you, I was not the best person to be around in June. Um, you know, that, that early part of June. And I'm, I was just, you know, thinking about, you know, various things. And it wasn't until my, my birthday, which is at the end of, end of June, where, it all kind of came back and, you know, we started to realize that we might come out of this lockdown. And that's when I started to talk to the band and say, right, we need to get your voice on, you know, I've, I've got a drummer who's, um, whose wife has had um, um, lung cancer and it's transferred elsewhere, but she's still around and doing well. But as he says, during lockdown, the last thing he wanted to be doing was mixing with people, you know, so... Um, we weren't going to get drum tracks out of him. So rather than find somebody else, I went through every digital recording that I've got and found outtakes and live recordings that I got my engineer to edit up. And uh, so what you hear on Isolation Boulevard is kind of fresh drum tracks that have been, um, and then we've built the tracks up from there. I've even grabbed um, the ARP synthesizers from the original Fox on the Run and put them in on this new track that, that, that we've um, found or, you know, um, re-recorded. Um, so, you, you know, there was a lot of um, instant karma that went into this. And um, people have said, why did you go down the route of the almost like a greatest hits, a little bit like Desolation Boulevard? I said, well, it's in the title. Isolation Boulevard, you know, you, you've, you've got to give, give, give the people what they want. And, and it's got to be a bit rocky. So you leave the earlier recordings out, you know, the, the little willies. You, it, it, it's not there. Um, but, but you go for the meat, you know, the, 
and set me freeze on there. And love is like oxygen. So we do have some new material, but I'm loath to try and do it the way some of these other bands have done it by welding it all together, getting the drummer to do his tracks over here and then adding a guitar here and a bass here. You do your voice at home, send it. No, it's not good enough. Have another go. I want the band. We're used to recording in the same room. So that's what I've got to wait for so that we get at least a green, because we were able to do a little bit of that in September, October this year. This is how, you know, we managed to get some of the backing vocals and um, the bass. And, um, you know, I, I got the singer and the bass player down for, for a day because they couldn't stay over because, you know, it, it's not part of the rules. Yeah. But I've got enough space, distancing. You stand over there, we'll plug you in and, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And um, we're all having lunch two meters apart, you know. It's, um, yeah. We'll have more from Mandy Scott coming up in the next three, four days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos and buy a Rock History Music t-shirt. There's links in the description of this video and they look really nice. It helps support our channel. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.